This is Gail Morgan, the director of the Libertarian Counterpoint, inviting you to listen to a best of show tonight as we review a past show from August of 2018. The studio has been damaged by a water pipe break and we're unable to be there tonight, but we should be there next week. Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, John Cameron, he's the author of uh, Rewire and Rekill and a development officer at Pacific Legal Foundation. You forgot about aristocracy. Oh, and aristocracy, the soon coming to be out, released. Coming when, out when's in it coming winter. out? In, in winter. Oh, okay. So you've got a, a release date now. Well, well winter. So how, did you finish the, the, the story? Yes. You finished the story yes. and you haven't told me what the end is. Well, I'll send it to you. Okay, yeah, you do that. Uh, also, J. Christopher, the chair of the Libertarian Party of Placer County, making her debut appearance on Libertarian Counterpoint. The first and female chair, first I'd female like to chair, add. First female chair, right. And the first organizer of the Libertarian Party presence uh, at the uh, Gay Pride Parade uh, a week you. or two ago. Thank you so much. And a, a, an excellent parade float it was, particularly that Tesla and particularly the uh, fact that I got to put a, a rainbow on my arm. That's it's right. still there, by oh, the way. Oh, good. Yeah. That's, that's great. Thank yeah, you so no, much. Great time. Great time. Thank you for that. Uh, the President of the United States went to Canada to, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait, we were talking, went, went to, uh, went to the, well, in the White House, he uh, was contemplating all of the negative publicity he's been getting over the fact that children are being separated from their families at the border. Uh, Gio, what's, what's your take on, on that whole fiasco and how I he backtracked? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I would say, oh, people are just getting outraged now? <laughs> why, not, why, not, why not five years ago when it was happening back then? Uh, why are we uh, deciding which kind of outrage we are going to uh, try to do something about? Why, why do we ignore um, the plight of marginalized peoples when a Democrat is in office. So that sounds like quite a bothersome. Yeah. Uh, which is very legitimate. I mean, obviously the media makes a big deal out of the I fact feel like they're crocodile tears. They, they make a big deal out of what Trump evil mm -hmm, is done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when it's done by Obama or mm -hmm. their side, it's uh, totally ignored right. or, or justified one way or another. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have to say Trump took it one step further or more, what more or to the point, uh, Attorney General Sessions took oh, one okay. step further. Mm -hmm. he, what he did is he said, okay, uh, under the Trump, uh, or under the Obama administration, the policy in generally for uh, families at the border was mm -hmm. to arrest them yes. and file civil procedures of, against mm -hmm. them and then turn them loose, ask them right. to come to court, at which point they would be eventually deported, mm -hmm. theoretically, or they wouldn't come to court and blend into American society, mm -hmm. which was what Trump complained about as catch and release, which yes. in fact, it, in many cases, it was. Yeah. That's a nice what, ring to it. What Trump, or what uh, Jeff Sessions did, is say, well, you, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna use criminal prosecution on all of these people that enter the hmm. border, uh, cross the border illegally. And in any criminal pr uh, uh, prosecution, whenever uh, somebody is accused of a crime, they don't get to take the kids to jail. It doesn't make any difference whether it's uh, immigration or anything else. Uh, which is which is true. Well, how do you so prove the that these kids are their actual kids? They're not coming with papers, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you know that these kids aren't being trafficked? Well, you, there's that question as well, which of course is a question that the uh, Trump administration was making that, you know, we don't know if these are actual, actual real I'm children. no Trump apologist, but I will say this. People are getting up in arms about it right now when really they should have been concerned about it the entire time since 2005 when actually it was George W. Bush, wasn't it? Probably, who created yeah. Operation, um, Oper Operation... The larger point, I think, is that what Trump has done to improve the optics, instead of capturing people at the border, putting kids in cages in a Walmart, and putting their parents in cages yeah. elsewhere, the new policy is, well, we'll put all of the kids in cages uh, managed by the Department of Defense. But they're together now. They're still in a cage, but now they're together in a cage. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's kind of saying that the uh, the Guantanamo model, which works so terribly well. Can we well, make it more like a daycare and less like a prison? Well, we don't know. Uh, but the point is, the problem is why in the world, <laughs> why in the world are we putting people in prison because they want to come to the United States hmm. to make more money, to earn a living, hmm. to be 
a beneficial part of society. That's the problem is not immigration, or mm -hmm. not, not illegal it's immigration. It's the welfare programs the they're hoping to get when they come here no, if they don't succeed no. at their... If you take a look at the well, I mean, welfare they're gonna, situation... They're going to succeed. If you take a look, may I chime in? Oh, yes. Yeah, I need, we need to stop this welfare argument in the butt. Because well, that's what I was going to chime in. Go about. ahead and do it then. So the, the argument is that uh, some of my hair apparently is on my, um, maybe all of it. Uh, the argument is right that that uh, that illegal immigrants are a net loss to the U.S. economy. That they come in and in mass get put on welfare rolls and don't add to the economy. That they are net users of government funds rather than net providers of uh, taxes. And all of the studies done by anybody on either side consistently prove that immigrants more than pay for their way. Absolutely. Immigrants do the jobs that no, no one, one else. else will do, and they bootstrap themselves. And they've done it since, since my ancestors came as immigrants. Some From of where? them were Irish. The, some of them uh, were English, some of them were French, and every generation of immigrants that don't come with capital, many of the people that come here as immigrants bring capital with them. And many of them don't do what they do in Canada, which is buy their way into the country in citizenship. They come here and they take risks and they live a very hard life and put in huge hours. And typically immigrants, I think, open 40 some odd percent of the small businesses in this country you can even say they're though the real Americans they are the real Americans and and if you would have you would have um, put up the same walls to immigration back when my ancestors came here you none would not of us be here. at this table would be here yep. and and my same. my ancestors some of them fam uh, faced signs that said no Irish need apply why because the Irish leaving a country where they were starving, were willing to come and work for lower wages than anyone else. And that's what immigrants do here consistently over and over again. They work harder and they at were the, the worst Mexicans jobs, of the, 20s. the Mexicans of the 1860s oh, and wow. 70s. So, um, or even, even well, earlier than that. In your case, the 1700s. Uh, 70, yeah, the people in South Carolina, 1700. Yeah. So hmm. uh, actually 16 something. My, hmm. my mama was wow. a DA all off. So, um, wow. It, it's a complete fallacy. It's it's a lie, and and you know I'm 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 not a Trump apologist either, but I almost think that Trump is crazy like a fox in some mm -hmm. of these things. And I think later we're going to talk about trade that he takes a a crazy position on stuff, and then backs off to in many cases um, get a temperature. Well, not only that, but. But when you're negotiating, if you take a crazy position and move off of it, you look very reasonable, even though you're moving the needle quite <gasps> far. Yes. And he does that over and over and over again. On this, I think Sessions um, is Ses Sessions is a lunatic. Um, and you know, we were hoping to have somebody in that that took a, a more deregulatory uh, look at the Department of Justice. And what he's done is, is turned it really into uh, almost a fascist state. And so I think it's a bad choice on Trump's part. And I know it appeals to a lot of the Republican base, which is strange because a lot of the Republican base are people who own businesses and actually employ millions of these people doing jobs that no one else would do. And, so the, and the statistical fact is that Native Americans, people who are, you know, three or four or five generations of Americans mm -hmm. are much more likely to be on welfare yes. than oh, first for generation sure. yes. immigrants. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. First immigrants generation. Immigrants don't come here to get on at welfare. Absolutely. They, they come here to work. Absolutely. And the lies that are told otherwise that they're here to go on welfare or to commit crime or just that, they're absolute stark, raving mad lies. One, well, and, and the, the left, uh, and I wish they wouldn't call themselves liberals because they're not, they're the Labor Party. And I hate the that labor, they call themselves progressive uh, because they're regressive. Yes, the Labor Party consistently tells the big lie labor over and over party. again. The lamestream media repeats it over and over again. And people believe the big lie, if they're stupid, told often enough. And in mm -hmm. this case, it is the big lie. And so, um, and I hate it. I, I hate kids being separated from their parents. It's crazy. Who I mean, who cares if if 
if you're worried about the fact that they're going to come in and take welfare, eliminate welfare. Right. But then the you eliminate welfare, the welfare, not, not immigration. Yeah. And, and the, there's one other you're wrinkle. Right. There's one other wrinkle that we seldom think about. But if you just think a little bit, it's this: people your age and older, or my age and older, mm. not me. Are that old? Part of the uh, mm. group of people who are collecting pensions of one oh, yeah. form or another. Yeah. And there are more of us than there are people of Jerry, uh, uh, Gia's age. I don't ever intend to collect. And the fact mm -hmm. that There's the There's to for me. number of people who are of working age is being vastly outnumbered as mm -hmm. time goes by yeah. by retirees means that all pensions, whether mm -hmm. it's federal pensions, state pensions, private pensions, you name it, they're all going broke gradually and sometimes not so gradually. The only way that you can correct the pension problem, so there are three, there are four ways. One, you can uh, r get a better investment return. Good luck with that with uh, public pe pension managers. Mm. Number two, you can raise the taxes, raise the uh, contribution level. California. Good luck with that, uh, getting it through and getting people to be on board for that. Number three, you can reduce benefits. Again, politically, good luck with that. And number four, you can you can. In change the ratio of working people to retired people. And the only way to do that with a static birth rate is by encouraging more mm -hmm. immigration of working age people. There are some, sir. We some should be here. welcoming immigrants with Absolutely. open arms. We should be giving them bonuses to you come here. You know what here. we should be afraid of is when they stop coming here. That would yeah, and, say something. And in fact, some demographics have already started doing that, which is a scary thing. And when they stop coming here and when they start going somewhere else, that means it's bad for us. It means that we are not worth coming to right. anymore. That's or right. when they start leaving. Because really, what is the government, um, if, you, if you, you know, get rid of all the crap we don't like, governments should be competing for citizens, right? Yes. Mm. Absolutely. Yes. Try it. Sure. The, the, better, the better country we have, the more people well, will want to come here and thrive. And the fact that they're taking, you know, the old argument, they're taking our jobs, again, nonsense. Every immigrant that comes here and mm -hmm. gets a job is also taking the money mm -hmm. he earns or she earns mm -hmm. and spending it or investing Correct. it, one or the other. Yeah, it's a that voluntary society. Another job. Mm -hmm. So it's, an, it's, it's, a, it's a net win-win right. situation. It's yeah. not uh, that they're taking our jobs. They're taking jobs that we probably don't want to do. Well, anymore. I think what they're doing is giving a false sense of uh, a zero-sum pie. And it's not a zero-sum game. Well, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, you can build a lot of wealth. The government should be um, a business where they compete for citizens, where they have a lot of things to offer citizens, such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But pursuit of happiness is not guaranteed. You know, happiness. It's not the guarantee of happiness. Happy, is happiness pursuit. is not guaranteed. Yeah. But you get to pursue it as much as you want, and there will not be anything standing in your way of you achieving um, prosperity for your family if you work hard and you keep a good reputation. Apple just made it harder for uh, for uh, the government to inspect your phone Good. without your permission. Tell us about Good. that, John. Well, yeah. until I did a little bit of research on it, I wasn't aware that th that there's a um, apparently a way if you have the right tool and the right equipment and the right timing to use the data port on many devices to actually bypass the whole um, software or thumbprint or facial re facial recognition process and go in through the data port to collect to collect data, which, duh, a data port, you know, then it makes sense. But I didn't think about it. So, you know, the thing about any, you know, like it's like the Maginot Line. You know, the, the way the Germans uh, defeated the Maginot Line in World War II was by going over it or around it. And, and you know, if security is through the screen, through the thumbprint, through, through facial recognition, then what other ways are there to go into the device? And apparently, uh, and when you think about it, it's pretty logical. If you want to get data in or out, you go in through the data port. So, so Apple is going to make it much harder for anybody to, and, and I would say impossible, but, but as we know, any, any defense that man creates, somebody else can circumvent. And I think it's a wonderful thing. I think uh, it's a great thing that Apple didn't roll over when uh, the government uh, demanded uh, a way to break their security. Um, During the San Bernardino. Yeah. Yes, and the, exactly. The, I have, I have exactly. a little problem in that apparently Apple has a way to break their security, and they just weren't turning it over to the government. So is, if, if that ability is there, 
then somebody's going to take advantage of it, whether it's Apple taking advantage of it they for their own They would have set a precedent game. to where they would have to do that every single time, yeah. and they and, don't want to yeah. do that. I would, I would like to see Apple um, get to the point where, or any of these other providers, and I think if they did, they would corner the market because people value what's in here. In, in, in mm. older days, um, your, your important papers were kept in a box. Uh, yeah, on your bookshelf or in your bookshelf or in a safe. Yeah. This is peop the, these devices are people's safes now. So how can it be safer? Um, how can it be wrong without a, a specific search warrant and a very good reason to break into somebody's house and and blow their safe open and take their information? Uh, how can it be wrong to do that when it's not wrong to take this safe? and open it up and take their no, information. It is the wrong. government argument was that if you are getting information from Apple, you're not getting it from you, John. Mm. Therefore, your Fourth Amendment rights are not being uh, mm. violated. Is that, the, the is that really? That was the argument. Yeah, mm. that was the government argument during the San Bernardino case. Oh, no. The problem with that, of course, is they're making the analogous argument would be that if you get the keys to your house from your landlord, then it's okay to search and ransack Or if the house. manufacturer of the safe uh, tells you how to get yeah. into it, then Or if it's you not find it violation. under the plant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, good yeah. move, Apple. Thank you very much. Yeah, I like that. President Trump left the G7 talk, trade talks in a huff. But he made, you know, and he said, you know, basically he walked out a day early and, you know, got every, wouldn't sign the joint agreement and just generally made a big scene. But he made one statement which I thought was absolutely fascinating. He said, we should consider, we should at least consider no tariffs, no barriers. Did he really say that? Yes. Scrapping That's all perfectly that. libertarian. Mm. Totally. Mm. Well, Imagine that. What hap what's the deal? Why am I hearing so much um, to the contrary? Well, <laughs> good question. <laughs> Uh, devil's advocate, a answer that question. What well, do you think? The, I think um, again, you know, talked about it earlier. Uh, Trump does this thing. It's uh, he says, "Look, squirrel," mm -hmm. and then then he does stuff. He's a deal maker. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get a chance to talk on, on an upcoming show about. Uh, well, I guess maybe on this one. The art a of the deal. Bit later, but the uh, the he he. Um, I almost think sometimes he he's playing an end game like a chess master, and maybe I'm giving him way too much credit and just trying to anthropomorphize as the sociopath, but um, <laughs> you know, and turn him into a real human. But it looks to me like he takes, like I said before, these completely outrageous positions, and then he backs off to quasi reasonableness, and then when he does that, people they're kind of go. Phew, Oh man, he might be human after all, and and they start negotiating. Whereas if he went in and said, "You know, here's the status quo. Let's move it 20 percent," people said, "No, no, 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 no. Status quo, good. Status quo, good." But what he's doing is say, "You know, let's kill every third person." Then he goes back down to, "You know, maybe some of these people should be in jail." Well, have so, you read the yeah. art of the deal? He perfectly lays out how he does business in that stupid book from the 80s. I read it back in the 90s back when um, I had a fiance who actually spent about $4,500 on Trump University. Did he benefit from Trump University? Well, we kept uh, getting, uh, you know, like almost all the information we were going to need, but you got to sign up for that next class if you really want to get the rest <laughs> of it. But um, the first thing you get is a free art of the deal, and I read yeah. it, and it was magnificent, and everything that he's done through his entire um, campaign and, and even through his presidency is to the book Art of the Deal. Well, he lays we, it out there exactly wanna, if, like you said. If you want to uh, look at, at what Squirrel. he's doing benignly, I, you, you know, maybe well, so. I, I think that if you, can't, I, the, if the you can't beat your opponent, you confuse back. them. <laughs> you can't beat them, you baffle them with the end. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. uh, the other uh, thing that we need to remember is that the trade deals, such as they are, whether you're talking about NAFTA, the uh, Asian free trade deal, the trade, de you know, the uh, trade deal with uh, any trade deal that you want to talk about. They are all managed trade. None mm -hmm. of them are anything close to free trade. Mm -hmm. They're saying, well, we'll do a 10% tariff if you do a 15% right. tariff, and we'll do this if you do that. I mean, if you want free trade, you write a deal, you write a one-page memorandum yeah. saying, we will not impose any tariffs right. on anybody. Yeah. 
monetary tariffs or, not, or, 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 or restrictions, any other restrictions. Let, let me play that. That's all you need. Let me play the devil's advocate on this. And that's what he's saying right here. And then well, I no, want to play I, the I know, devil's, I know he said the angel's that. advocate. So I know he said that. But what happens um, when you look at, and we've, we've talked many times, and, and we always say, you know, in game, who cares as long as the consumer benefits in this country? Um, and the, the problem is that if all the tariffs went away, it would be whoever would win the, the fight in many of these industrial, industrialized countries would be the, the people inside the country who gave the, the greatest gifts to their favorite industry so that they compete at a higher level. Now, if you hmm. could, you know. I, what, no, I don't follow that at all. So, so let's say, uh, for example, you are, are um, Toyota and you are competing with Government Motors or GM. So if the um, Japanese government gives uh, Toyota uh, preferential tax rates and, and um, so that their net cost... If they're subsidizing <coughs> Toyota. So, yeah, yeah subsidizing subsidizing. Toyota. Okay, who are they really subsidizing? Well, American consumers, yeah, who cares? I, well, I, I know that, but the, the, and, and that's why I'm playing devil's advocate here. But because that's crony capitalism. Is, yeah, that's right. when the government gets involved and gets to pick winners and losers. I know. And, and so the, what, the consumer gets limited. Um, I hate to interrupt you, my friend, but the consumer... I'm going to play angel's advocate right now. The consumer, the consumer is limited by the options that the government gives them, yes. and these options, our our availability to um, buy the goods and services that we want, that should not be um, considered a gift oh, from no, the I, government. I, I absolutely agree with you, and the, the 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 problem goes deeper than you can you can eliminate all the tariffs in the world, and I'd say yes. My short answer would be yes. I'm playing a devil's advocate here. But even in, in, a, in an environment when there are no tariffs or barriers anywhere, government subsidies, the games they play with their accounting and all the rest of that, that's why you know the, the people Well, were subsidies are another way of managing trade. Yes. That's, it's, another, it's just the other side of the coin, that's right. all. So, so how I mean, do you, gonna how get do you, if you're going to get rid of, rid of free trade, you really, you need to get, you need to add. A subsidy no is tariffs, propping up no a loser. Barriers, no subsidies. No subsidies. A subsidy and is propping up a loser that can't compete in the marketplace. Like government yeah, voters. So, the, so if you wrote that in, fine. And what's happening is the, um, the biggest way that, that U.S. industry is being punished is by its own government. Um, taxing corporations in this country mm -hmm. at, at such a high level compared to the rest of the world that U.S. corporations have to play uh, some pretty sneaky accounting games yes. and move uh, operations and finance and headquarters yes. and manufacturing offshore even though they're U.S. companies and, and bring goods and services back into the country uh, even in sometimes facing uh, these tariffs and barriers because it's cheaper for them to do that than manufacture goods and services in the U.S. for consumption in the U.S. and export. You so, can say that's a so, broken window fallacy and yeah. that you're um, offering jobs to people who specialize in loopholes for taxes. Yeah, I absolutely employing agree. a lot of so tax we're, we're all We're all in agreement here. We just need to... The simple solution might need to go a little deeper, like you said, no subsidies. And, and how about... Uh, a corporate tax rate throughout the world. No, a corporate That's tax exactly rate is zero because same. corporations don't pay taxes anyway. Only shareholders employers, pay taxes, employees, yeah. shareholders, and uh, consumers pay so taxes. So corporations are in, in this country. It's a, it's it's a double, pass they're double tax. Well, no, it's a pass through. It's a pass through yeah. to consumers. Can I simple it down a little bit when the young kids. Please do. When I go and down you to do the. Uh, have, thank you very much. That was one of mine, I'm when sure. I, uh, yes, yeah. of course. Um, yeah. When I go to the high schools and I do. Um, uh, outreach for the voter uh, program where we're signing up new 17 and 18 year olds at the high schools to vote and we give them a mock election and we get to participate in a forum where a libertarian, a Republican and a uh, Democrat show up and we get to tell them what our, our principles are and one question that they have asked me so many times is so then are you saying that we should be an isolationist country? And I would say absolutely not. We should be uh, inclusive with everyone who has goods and services to offer us, and we have goods and services to offer them, and then we will become friends through trade. Absolutely. That's the, that's the key right there. Peace through California, trade. Peace through trade. California is now going to vote on whether there should be three of us 
Uh, it's going to be on the November 6th ballot. Just Put California three into three parts, Northern yeah, California, Kansas Southern California, and, uh, coastal California, and Coastal California. Yeah. What do we think about that? Why not? Why not? Well, I, I can tell you why it's not going okay, to happen. Okay, well, I can tell you off the top of my head why it's a bad idea. Well, let me tell you why it's not going to happen. Why it's, why it's a pipe Because dream. you have to redesign the flag and find out where you're going to put two extra stars because you've got two extra states. And how are you going to rearrange the flag? It's going to look off-centered. It's going to be ugly. It's not going to happen because there, it ha any, any uh, split of states has to be approved by the Senate. Right. The Senate is not going to want four more senators from California. That's not going to happen. I don't want four more senators from California either. Can you imagine another Feinstein? Oh, Can goodness. you imagine another Pelosi? Oh, exactly. goodness. Well, not Pelosi, but... Uh, uh, Whatever. Harris, yeah. Yeah, Harris. Oh, Kamala, that's right. Oh, my God. That's my worst nightmare. I, so, so it's not going to happen. The, but it's going to be fun to watch the, yeah. uh, the voting take place, and it may even pass. Who knows? Well, the, here's, here's some things that are... There, there's, there's the state of Jefferson folks here. Oh, goodness. Uh, and and I, I went and spoke to a group of them a while back. And the state of Jefferson can't bring a lawsuit, but one of the organizations that is kind of tangential to or maybe part of is actually suing because it speaks to why the state of California should be at least three states because we have so few representatives per 100,000 population. Um, Californians are not represented. Yeah. They are what's happened is and, and with the gerrymandered districts and all the rest of that you, you're really forcing a two-party system, and in this state, you're actually forcing a one-party system. And the only way um, that that this socialist state of California will ever change is if if small groups of people can make a stand and grow that stand, so that in one district somewhere there can be a libertarian candidate, and it can be a hotbed of li and people will look at it and say, "Gosh, I want to do business there. Gosh, I want to live there. Yeah. Gosh, there's no crime there. Yes. People are happy. Yes. Making are the free. government compete for its citizens yeah. and for its businesses. Yeah. And, if you yeah. want to come and live there, it's because you chose to, not because you're landlocked, not because you're forced to. And you know, historically, the the California already did this. They voted to to create another state and put it in in, in front of the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. And and you know I guess West Virginia Virginia was split into West Virginia and Virginia a while back in 1856 or something. That was the last time West this Virginia was done. lost on that deal. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, but what I'm what I'm saying is is that, that, that they would probably go back to that precedent, and and that's a terrible precedent. What we're we're about another time. Ah. I'd just like to remind everybody that you can watch Libertarian C uh, Counterpoint on Channel 17 in Sacramento. Uh, you can watch on YouTube, and you can watch on Facebook or live on the web at www.accesssacramento.org at 8 p.m. Thursday, noon Friday, and 4 a.m. Saturday. Thank you for, very much for being part of the show. See you all again next week. Well, thank, thank you, you very much for having us. Thank you so much. Uh, Richard, I really appreciate it. My, my kind of you. Oh, man. Wait. I got it. Oh, oh. Uh -uh. Wait, do oh. that again. Do oh. that again. Oh! oh.